Hey everybody, this is Donald Trump and this lesson is Modeling Linear Relationships. Let's go ahead and get started here. So, um, a department store offers a frequent buyer's card for um, uh, to earn rewards for purchases uh, customers make at the store. Each transaction is worth 12 points and the customer automatically earns 25 points when they sign up. Okay, so let's write an equation for the function that gives the card value based on the number of transactions that have occurred. Okay, so what units, this is always what we have to ask ourselves, what units will be associated uh, with the variables in this? Okay, well, the units are points you guys so the variables are card values and transactions and the units for the card values are going to be the points right there okay so let's go ahead and complete the verbal model for the frequent buyers card function including units okay so the card value points equals the initial value uh, points which is that 25 points for signing up plus you get 12 points for each transaction so the purchase value which is points per transaction that's the 12 times the number of transactions and we're going to call that T in this case so write the function rule for the card value function C so this is the cost or the card value for the number of transactions that's what T is it's going to equal our initial sign up which is that 25 right here the initial points value plus the 12 points for each transaction. So this will be 25 plus 12T. Now can you see this right here? Y equals, over here is our MX plus B right there. Okay, so we can graph that and this would be our y-intercept right here. This would be our slope or our rate of change, okay? So for each uh, 100 points, the customer receives a gift card. Woohoo! And then, so how many transactions will it take for the customer to earn the first gift card? Well, okay, so we're asking, when is this going to equal 100? So we just set this equation equal to 100, and then we solve for t, and that will tell us how many transactions. So here we are subtracting 25 from both sides, then dividing by 12, and we get 6.25 transactions. Well, what does that mean? We can't have 6.25 transactions, so it's going to be more than six transactions. So on the seventh transaction, they're going to earn their first gift card, because that's when it finally goes over 100 right there, so 100 points. So what is the y-intercept for this linear function, and what does that represent? Well, the y-intercept was that plus 25, so it's that 25, and it represents the beginning value, where we have zero transactions, in the points on a frequent buyer's card. So when we first sign up, we get 25 points. So what is the slope for this linear function? Well, that was that 12t. And what does it represent? Well, the slope was 12, and it represents the rate of change, or the rate of increase in points per transaction, because you get 12 points per transaction. So that would be the rate of change. All right, let's create and interpret a linear model right here, OK? so. Here's another one. Uh, fundraising. So the Band Boosters Club is selling t-shirts and blanket wraps to uh, raise money for a trip. The band director has asked the club to raise at least a thousand bucks. Okay. All right. So uh, the Boosters Club president wants to know how many t-shirts and how many blanket wraps the club needs to sell to meet their goal of a thousand bucks. Okay. So the t-shirts cost ten dollars each. So this will be 10T, and the blanket wraps cost $25 each. So we'll call this 25B, I think. So let's write a linear equation that describes the problem, and then graph the linear equation. All right, easy enough. And well, maybe not, but we'll go through. We'll get through this. So how can the Boosters Club president use the sales price of each item to meet their goal? Okay, woo-hoo. All right, here we go. So let's identify the important information. Okay, so t-shirts cost, how much do t-shirts cost? 10 bucks and blanket wraps cost 25 bucks, okay? And the Boosters Club needs to raise 1,000 bucks. All right, so easy enough. We're going to go ahead and put that in right there. Okay, so the total amount of revenue earned by selling uh, t-shirts is, I think it was 10 bucks, and the total amount of uh, revenue earned by selling the bracket blanket wraps is 25 bucks. So these two results can be added and set equal to the sales goal to find the number of t-shirts and blanket wraps that need to be sold to reach our thousand dollars. Okay, so let's graph this function to find all possible combinations of t-shirts and blanket wraps. So this is like 10x plus 25y uh, equals a thousand. 
okay? Or they're, but they're going to do 10t plus 25b equals 1,000, okay? Just think of x and y's, okay? So we're trying to get that 1,000 bucks right here. So it so, um, uh, looks like we're going to put uh, the blanket wraps first. So this is going to be 25 right here plus the t-shirts. This is going to be 10. That's going to equal 1,000 right there, okay? All right. So let's go ahead and uh, graph that right here. So it looks like, you guys, um, that you can choose whichever one you want to be uh, your, your x-axis and your y-axis, but they put the t right here. So this right here is always our x column, and this is always our y column. So t is right down here. So this is for t-shirts right here. So right in here is going to be the number of t-shirts, and then b is going to be our y column, and this is going to be the number of our blanket wrap. So those got to be distinguished first right there. So we got to put that in there, okay? All right. So when uh, when uh, t equals zero, here's right here, then 25 goes into a thousand. Um, uh, we get 40 times. 25 goes into a hundred four times, so into a thousand is 40 times. Notice I plotted uh, zero forty right there. All right. And then um, Let's do this one next, you guys. When uh, t when b equals zero, so we'll make this uh, zero. So ten goes into a thousand a hundred times right there. So uh, then we're going to graph a hundred zero right there. Well, that's easy enough. So we can um, go ahead and connect that line right there. And then this one, um, I mean, you can put in fifty for t right here. So this would be uh, five hundred right here. So we'd subtract five hundred and divide by 25, or now that we have the graph, we can go over 50 and figure out it's going to be, uh, that the blanket wraps is going to be 20 to get that matching pair right there. So it's 20 right there. All right. Okay, so uh, there's our equation right there, 10t plus 25b equals 1,000. I don't know why they switched it. We could have written this right there, but they wrote 10t first right there. Probably because the T's down here and the B's going right there. That comes first right there. All right, so the X-intercepts represents the number of... Here's the X-intercept right here. It represents the number of uh, T-shirts that are needed to be sold if there are no blanket wraps right there. And the Y-intercept right here is the number of blanket wraps that need to be sold if there are zero T-shirts being sold right there, okay? All right, and then the Boosters Club uh, president can use the, the line right there to find the possible outcomes of T-shirts and blanket wraps that's going to reach our $1,000 right there. Okay, just filling in some blanks right there. So technically, you guys, the graph of possible combinations and T-shirts of blanket wraps uh, that reach the goal of a thousand dollars should be discrete. Well, discrete just means they're they're just points, you guys. They're not a line. So so let me back up right here. This is not a discrete graph right there. If I took out this line right here and just had these points right here, it would be a discrete graph. Discrete just means it's just separated by points. It's not connected by a line. But for convenience, the graph is shown as a connected line, so it helps us you know find other points right there. So explain why the solution to this problem would only be points on the line that have whole number coordinates. Well, you can't sell, you know, decimal blanket wraps or decimal t-shirts. They can only sell whole number of t-shirts and whole number of blankets. So they'd, they'd only be uh, points on the graph, not the line connected. But the line just makes it convenient for us to find things right there. All right, let's try another one. A sandwich shop sells sandwiches for $5 each and bottles of water for uh, $1 each. The owner of the shop needs to earn a total of 100 bucks by the end of each day. Write a linear equation that describes the problem. Then graph the linear equation and make sure to label both axes with appropriate titles. Okay, and then use the graph to determine how many sandwich shops must be sold, uh, must uh, sell uh, if no water is sold. All right, so right here the S stands for sandwich and W stands for water. So this is going to be the number of water bottles. This is going to be the number of sandwiches sold. Okay, all right, there we go. And then so our equation is five bucks for the sandwiches plus one dollar for the water equals a hundred right there. Okay, well, so um, we can go ahead and graph right here if. if if uh, S equals zero, then W is going to have to be a hundred right here, and then so we'll graph uh, zero one hundred right up here, and then if W equals zero, five goes into uh, one hundred twenty times, so we'll graph zero or twenty zero. So there's twenty zero. Let's go ahead and connect them up with that line right there. Again, that would be a, a discrete graph, but this is a non-discrete graph, an indiscrete graph. 
So um, technically, it wouldn't be a line. It would be a bunch of points. But this line helps us solve some things right here. All right, so let's answer the question right here. So then use the graph to determine how many sandwiches uh, the shop must sell if no waters are sold. So if zero waters are sold, okay, that would be right here. Then the number of sandwiches would be 20. They'd have to buy 20 sandwiches. So if there's no water, 20 sandwiches must be sold, okay? All right, so how can the graph of a linear function be used to answer the real word problems? Well, there's the answer. So the points along the graph of a linear function are the answers to a real world problem. And so what is the first step when modeling the linear relationships? Well, we got to uh, determine the units of these things right there. Okay, gang, if you're in my class, that would be your homework. Sorry for the long lesson, and see you in the next one.